escalating India-Pakistan standoff, it's the hum of drones that has taken over the war front. India's drones fleet has emerged as a defining uh, edge and precision strikes on terror camps in Pakistan as well, neutralizing swarms of incoming kamikaze drones, UAVs or what is called as unmanned aerial vehicles, you will use all that phrase a lot today, UAVs have become both the sword and also the shield. Right, India's journey, we're going to talk about it. We're going to be speaking specifically about the homegrown drone industry from DRDO's Tapas and Nishan to Idea Forge's Switch. They're now deep inside the country's defence playbook. They're sometimes backed by Israeli tech and they're powered by Indian innovation. We thought today it was important to break down the journey, the story of these unmanned systems as they're changing the rules of engagement. Remember, Pakistan is still relying on Turkish drones, Chinese supplies, many of which were shot down, jammed and we are going to talk a little bit about India's strategic edge. So this indigenous picture that we talk about, things being built in India, the technology, the software coming from India, we talk about that and more. So AI-driven surveillance, loitering uh, munitions, it's clear that our bots in the air are now more lethal, more intelligent and more decisive than ever before. And one of the key players powering this unmanned edge is actually Idea Forge, a company whose drones are already in active defence use across India's borders. And joining us today is Ankit Mehta, the CEO and co-founder of Idea Forge, to tell us about how the Indian drone tech is actually rewriting the battlefield strategy. Good morning, Ankit. Thanks so much uh, for coming in and joining us uh, with along with your cup of coffee today. What you do is very serious, but we want to understand the tech. We want to get behind the brains of how this is really developing in India and what is really the way forward. But for starters, uh, can we get a broader picture, a big picture analysis of in the India-Pakistan military escalation that we've seen in the last few days, drones have dominated the battlefield. As someone building this, are you saying, or would it be right to say at this point that the role of drones in uh, warfare is now the next step, the next big thing? Absolutely. I think uh, if you look at what has started to happen since the Armenia-Azerbaijan war, yeah. uh, drones have taken center stage and uh, if you look at any new war that has happened, any scenario that has played out, all of them have had uh, drones at the forefront hmm. in that one sense, uh, well ahead of even people, if I may, because uh, it's difficult for people to enter places where drones can enter and uh, get uh, into the action. So, I think uh, going forward, we will not see any other uh, scenario play out, but to have drones at the forefront. Now, drones can be at the forefront in two, three ways. Hmm. Uh, the first and the foremost way is that uh, we need to find targets. Like ultimately, every defense force, every army, every air force, navy, they need targets. And to understand the uh, target, to confirm the target, to know what's the present situation at the target or to precisely identify a target. Drones are deployed across board. You have very large drones that can look deeper into the adversary's domain. You have very small drones that can perhaps be launched from the palm of your hand and look at the house right in front of you. So any uh, scenario where drones are deployed, they are deployed to confirm, identify and find targets. Mm. Once you have found targets, then you need to neutralize targets. And in order to neutralize targets, Drones are being deployed to ensure that uh, before the target is neutralized, it is reconfirmed hmm. by the same asset, by somebody perhaps holding the button uh, way behind to try and reconfirm that actually what was uh, thought is a target is the hmm. actual target. So your precision of targeting becomes that much better and you are able to be very, very a clear, precise in who and what you are targeting. And that's something again drones enable in a very good way to a very high accuracy level. Now, this accuracy is achieved both in case of some drones which are operated uh, presently in the war in Russia, Ukraine. They are called FPV drones. Yeah. They are operated by somebody wearing goggles and literally reconfirming the target uh, at the terminal end before it goes into the uh, target. But on the other hand, there are autonomous drones that can essentially lock onto a target, 
and go in precisely within a circular error of probability it's called within a circular error probability of perhaps 2 meters in some cases 1 meters or 5 meters depending on the uh, weapon that you are carrying and the kind of damage that is expected so these are the two key areas and then of course the if you have done damage then you need confirmation of damage if you look at what was happening uh, even in the present strikes we needed confirmation that there is actually something that has happened uh, because and it has hit the intended target and you can confirm that that's happened so reconfirmation battlefield damage assessment these are some of the additional areas where drones are deployed in fact even before that drones can also be deployed to create three dimensional maps with very high accuracy hmm. of any terrain that you are wanting to navigate or looking to do. And drones now come with sensors that can look uh, in foggy conditions using radar. They come with foliage penetrating radars depending on the class of drones. They come with sensors that are LiDAR that can map the terrain, give you very precise area. There are drones that come with the ability to almost in real time create the three dimension of a target that you're trying to uh, look at or attack or uh, get more information about. So, there is a vast array of capabilities that exist and all of them, if I may, get deployed in some form or fashion in uh, any of the existing wars that are uh, going on. So, can we ask you the other question, which is that India has also been dealing with drones coming across the border, right? Mm. And when it comes to how to bring down drones, there's hard kill and soft kill. Soft kill, for example, is if you jam the drone. Hard kill is if you decide to smash it out of the air in some way. I want to ask you, when it comes to the race to stop drones, so the other side of this conversation, what's coming there? What worries you, for example? See, I think uh, it's very clear that uh, in the wars, as particularly what has happened in, if you look at Ukraine-Russia war, uh, heavy electronic warfare has been happening. And in the presence of very heavy electronic warfare, uh, drones, they go blind because their GPS can be jammed. GPS jamming is very easy. It can be done on a very large area. So it really doesn't know uh, where it is in the real world. Mm. And therefore, uh, it needs to, it, it cannot, if you've given it a coordinate, and if its GPS is jammed and it's operating based on GPS, it can't do the precision or the strike that you really want it to do, right? Yeah. And then you can also cut the communication if the communication between the drone and the uh, pilot is uh, using wireless technology. Then by jamming the wireless airwaves, you can also cut the communication between the drone and the pilot. Uh, you go blind and you go pilot. deaf. You have no connection yeah. then. Exactly. So therefore, uh, the drone again has to be on its own. Mm. Either it has to come back. Uh, because it is uh, it is better to retrieve the asset rather mm -hmm. than lose it when it goes both blind and deaf. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you could also have autonomous capabilities mm. where once it has identified a target or has the algorithm to search for a target that you have pre-fed to the drone, mm. it can do the uh, search and it can then, if required, neutralize depending on what has been programmed or what has been the mission given in most cases. Uh, at this point in time in the war, people do want the kill button on a human's hands. But uh, there would be in future autonomous capabilities where it will identify the target, it will confirm it and it will perhaps also neutralize the target uh, while it is uh, doing its mission. We'll so, get there, we'll get there too in a, in a <laughs> there, second. There's so much to talk about and we can see the passion with which Ankit is speaking as well. But Ankit, I think the key question here, considering the times we live in, uh, the Prime Minister just spoke last evening and said that Operation Sindhur is not over. It is clearly on a pause. So we are in a live situation. In times like these, the question that comes to mind is, how do Indian drones really stack up against what is what is there in the world, against globally? We've heard a lot about, I mean, if I can quote some here, the TB2 or the US-backed uh, MQ-9 Reaper, all of these, which are some of them Turkish bagged, the others which the Pakistani side was also using. At this point, what can you tell us about what India has versus where the drone tech has developed across the globe? See, I think, uh, you know, you have to look at drones in a very wide way in the sense that you cannot look at drones as one category. Like I mentioned to you, there are drones that can take off from the palm of your hand and look at a house right in front of you or there are drones that have to look at the same house or the same asset from 5-10 kilometers away, from 10 to 50 kilometers away, from hundreds of kilometers away because that's how far the asset will have to travel 
to reach a place where it can look at the target uh, with reasonable clarity right hmm. so depending on what kind of assets you're talking about different different countries in the world or different different companies in the world have different different capabilities and clarity so if i may to talk about these classes then uh, you know in india right now we've just started to build the ones that can launch from the palm of your we just we are early in that space so we are not at the cutting most edge one of the capabilities that we have developed over the years is from about 5 to uh, perhaps 20 kilometers in that range we have some of the most advanced drones in the world with respect to flight time and the weight a soldier has to carry in the field to make an mission happen that is required for surveillance and uh, other activities so those kind of drones we have perhaps the best performing drones in the world very capable and with the upcoming capabilities these drones are going to be even better than what's possible out there then when we look at larger classes from there again india hasn't developed indigenous capabilities there or doesn't have a finished product that yeah. is yet deployed over there so there again you will find that the israeli businesses or the uh, some american and some european as well they will be doing uh, reasonably well in that domain so it depends on which class which category as the country in a way focused on hmm. and uh, you know the origin story of indian drone industry in a way starts with our journey and we started doing it because we wanted to do it for uh, you know soldiers who are engaged in a last mile battle against terrorists so in 2008 when the attacks happened on the country we wanted to create technology that can help in that situation so we needed something that can go on the uh, shoulders shoulders of our soldiers make sure that they are able to deploy it at the last mile and can be persistent in their observation of the target can look at the blind side and understand how to approach an asset where somebody on the other side is hold up and this technology is deployed very uh, widely now in the country and in most of the counter insurgency counter terrorism operations you will find that our drones are doing services and have many successes over the years We haven't we haven't talked about your journey mm. from IIT on to the battlefield and in in itself it's a very very cool very indian story we'll touch on it in a second but in one of your previous answers you you sort of teased something that's very interesting and we need to dive deeper uh, ai driven drones autonomous drones how close are we to truly seeing that take place you know drones that can make decisions on their own missions how far are we see at least from the point of view of detecting your uh, targets uh, detecting adversary for example uh, drones can today host on the edge autonomous people detection autonomous motion detection they can do object detection etc so autonomous capabilities where you put a drone out there in an area and you want it not just one drone in many cases autonomous capability can have multiple drones going and searching an area looking for these targets looking for these assets hmm. so that autonomous capability without needing without a human eye needing to look at the camera or the feed is something that has been achieved and is deployed in various forms and factors across the world including in our country hmm. but uh, if you were to say that can that be then then the coordinate be then passed on to targeting autonomously I think globally right now there may be a few examples where it has happened where they have targeted it autonomously but uh, I would say that uh, in general there is an aversion to do that because perhaps of course uh, the question of accountability right yeah. Mm. yeah the fear the fear that you know machines might target the so who do you hold the... accountable right I mean ultimately uh, that that question has to be addressed as to who do you hold accountable for doing something wrong mm. with an asset Right, okay. we have the last few minutes with you, Ankit. So, really want to understand how did uh, you decide to sort of get into this very interesting insight? How 2611 got an entire industry to move forward in that direction. But look at the times now; they're quite different. But the use of drones still quite sort of stays. So, tell us uh, how did it start? Uh, how did you think of getting into this? And perhaps the right time. Your your stock has done very well. Thank you. So I think uh, in terms of uh, how we started it actually started as a fun college project uh, one of my uh, co-founders I used to uh, run an innovation cell at IIT Bombay and uh, he came up to me and he said I want to make a hovercraft and float it in the Pawai Lake so from uh, that introduction to aerial drones to making our first drone prototype a quadcopter drone in 2004 it's been 20 plus years that we've been dabbling with this technology from 4 till 8 we were more like having fun with the technology but 
in 2008 9 time frame we delivered to our uh, research labs in the country were world smallest and lightest autopilot at that time as well as we after 2611 uh, came up with the idea and the necessity or the necessity of building something that can help in the kind of situations that uh, we encounter in such counter insurgency or counter terrorism operations mm. and then of course uh, you know you saw an early prototype of ours in the movie creedits so <laughs> so we have been really, really in cool. a way <laughs> so we in a way pioneered this space in the country and uh, we've been uh, building this technology from grounds up making it operational with our forces it's not just about building drones but it's also about making sure that our jawans our forces can utilize the technology very effectively at the last minute okay so we have about a minute left can we very quickly ask you what percentage of your drone right now and take any one of your models is <clears throat> made in india and what's the journey to getting hmm. it to be 100% see uh, <clears throat> in terms of our current capability between i would say 60 70 60 plus percent is uh, indian in all of our drones in hmm. terms of the journey to 100% it will never happen because uh, maybe we don't make the minerals we don't have the mines for hmm. a bunch of stuff chips right? sensors we don't currently those. make the chips hmm. for the, some of the stuff and there will still be some advanced capabilities that will come from the rest of the world what we have to ensure is that we have to ensure two things right first we have to ensure that we don't have anything critical coming from any geography of concern that mm. can potentially be sabotaged uh, when it comes to particularly electronics and intelligence mm. and then we have to ensure that uh, nobody can stop us from making what we want to make which is making sure that we have strategic autonomy and perhaps now given this uh, you know this uh, situation that we just went through Uh, there is time to talk about not just strategic autonomy but strategic superiority hmm. yeah yeah ankit we'll leave it there for the moment uh, good luck with everything that you're doing well done with all the progress yeah, that has been made you and hmm. so many others who are working on this has really made uh, you know put india at the forefront so uh, thank you so much for that uh, before i let go there is one very popular question that comes often when drones are asked and that is how during the ukraine uh, azerbaijan uh, entire conflict the use of drones there would you say that's been one space which changed the way in which the world looks at drones now and how if yeah. you could define yeah absolutely i think uh, you know Ar armenia azerbaijan very clearly told us that uh, you know there is not going to be any war without that and ukraine russia has established how and what is going to be the dynamics of a entrenched war the like situation where uh, the war is not a very short conflict which was the case of armenia azerbaijan but it's going to be a extended a long entrenched war right. and in both of these we have strong learnings and uh, you know like our uh, you know vice uh, you know our dg air operations had mentioned that uh, no war is going to be the same so what happened in the russia ukraine war may not repeat in another war because we would have so many learnings and it will start at a different pedestal itself and we'll have to evolve from there so i think uh, we need to really uh, make sure that we are prepared for the future we are prepared for what's possible and uh, build uh, the best capability in our country that uh, can make us proud uh, like our forces have done us uh, in this operation in the world already right from iit bombay to three idiots to in operation sindur agiti all done is that. well in yeah. india's drone infrastructure yeah, i think that's, that's the headline i can take from here it's it's been really really cool